Hey guys, it's Mudsy here from Muay Thai Interviews again. Um, my next guest is Luke Barr. He's from Wales. He's currently training and fighting out of Kai San Suk Jim Patia, and he's also a superstar on Max Muay Thai. Mate, welcome. Thanks for having taken the time out to have a chat. And what's been happening, buddy? Uh, thanks, thanks for having us. Um, well, I've just been doing the usual training for fights and uh, living here at the gym in Patea. Yeah. Um, I fought on the 5th of November. Yes, that was, only, uh, that was only a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it? Yeah, against Namkabon. I don't know if you know him. He's uh, quite tall. Yeah, I don't know him personally, but I, I watched the fight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm fighting again next weekend, actually, against yeah. Kitty. Do you know Kitty? He's tall as well. Mate, yeah, I, I, no, I don't know him, but yeah, by the sounds of it, you're not mucking around, mate. What's that, two, three weeks in between fights and you're back on yeah, it well, again? They, they had to reschedule some events, I think, because of the, uh, the King's funeral and all. They, uh, so they just they just rang me up and said, fight again in 12 days. So. <laughs> there you go. Excellent, mate, excellent. Mate, um, before you came to Thailand to continue this awesome journey you have been on so far, can you tell me about how Muay Thai came into your life and where it all started for you? I just, I actually, I've been to Thailand. I watched it once. I came back to the UK. I moved back to Cardiff, and I was like, right, I want to have a go at that. And then I went to the local gym, which is called Eagles in Cardiff. And, uh, yeah, I just took it from there. I started going, like, once or twice a week and just fell in love with it quickly. So how long ago was that? When did you first... Uh, that was... Uh, how many years ago? Probably about five or six years ago, six, seven years ago, maybe. Oh, cool, man! And and you've come and you've come so far already. And, yeah, and well, for the first like three, four years, I kind of did it part time, but I became pretty obsessed with it pretty quickly. I was pretty, I was never any good when I started, really. I just liked it. Yeah. And then uh, the, the the trainer at Eagles, Lee Power, who's a character. Anyone who's ever met him, you know, they'll, they'll laugh about him. He's a good, he's a good guy. Um, he chucked me in to fight, yeah, and I just kind of liked it, so I just carried on. And the rest, they say, is history, eh? Yeah, and all, all the boys in Cardiff kind of took me on and taught me the whole pads, and they kind of let me get involved with all the fighters there. And Yeah, and then after I've been doing it for a few years, I've been back and forth to Thailand a few times. I was like, right, I'm moving there. And then just was just all right. Yeah, moving left, and I've never gone back. That, mate, that's Being that's, all, that's awesome. Love a good love a good story like that, um, mate. And you just said because you, you've been in Thailand um, the whole time or for quite some time. What other gyms have you trained at in Thailand? And would you be able to talk a little bit about the styles? Yeah. So uh, when I first started coming to Thailand, I always went to Sit Mon Chai, and that's oh, part yeah. of the reason. Fell in love with Mu like Muay Thai because like they're they're great people there and like I still go and visit like every like couple of months like pretty much every month I go visit after I fight because I got a friend friends who stay there like Willie Whipple I mean you, you talked to him before as well yep yep um, and yeah so I was going back and forth to there from from the UK and then two and a half years ago I, when I decided to move here. I followed Willie to a gym in Phuket called Kalpatak. Yeah, yeah. Right, and that, that's where I met uh, Chanrit Sitto, who's, who's my trainer at the moment, and started training with him. And it's when I started training with him, I started kind of, you know, getting, I got started getting a lot better. I, you know, found my sort of style. You know, and I, I never found anyone else who taught me the same way. So, So have you pretty much... Since you've been in Thailand, you've just followed him around. Well, what happened was, we I was in Phuket for about a year and a half. Yep. And <laughs> there's another trainer down there called Meow, who's like he's like a brother to me. And uh, Chan and Meow were both there. Sorry, did you say yeah. Chow and Meow? Chan, Ch Chanrit, and the, another trainer called Meow. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Right. And uh, Chan left the gym for some reasons and went back to to his home. Yeah, and I stayed in, at the gym in Phuket for a while, uh, and Meow looked after me down there, and uh, I got a bit sick of Phuket, and after I'd been there for about a year and a half, I wanted to go back and fight on Max, and they said I could come and stay here, 
at the stadium, do a tournament, and train in the Max Gym. So I left Phuket and came here, and that's where uh, Noi and his son Non, who own this gym, Santip Gym, yep. said they were opening a gym. And they asked me, if, you know, who's your favorite trainer and all of this. And I said, oh, I'd love to train with Chan again. I've like, never really felt the same since I stopped training with him. And they said, oh, we'll try and get him back. Literally three days later, he turned up. Turned up before my fight, and I hadn't seen him in ages, and I'd already made up my mind I was going to move to Patea then and come to their gym when it opened. So that's how I ended up here. Oh, sweet as, man. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, you are a regular fighter on Max Muay Thai, and you've been elevated to main event status because your fights are so exciting and you're always looking for the finish. How did that come about, mate? Well, I've always fought aggressive because when I started, I wasn't that good, so I, I just kind of used my heart to fight, really. And uh, I've changed my style a lot. And when I started training with Chan and Phuket, he kind of taught me to use my elbows a bit more, and I started knocking people out and just started developing a Ford's fighting style, found it worked for me, you know, and just kept building on it from there. Absolutely, mate. And one thing I want to talk about um, <clears throat> is your fight with Si'ui on Max last year. Up until that point, I'd heard of you, but I'd never really followed you. But when I heard you were fighting Si'ui, I was genuinely worried for you because Zui's actually a friend of mine who I used to train with, and I've seen him fight many times before. But you held your own in there, and you even looked like you were having fun at times. Mate, what was that experience like? And what, was, and, and what were your thoughts when you found out you were fighting Siui? Because since that fight, I've been a fan of you ever since. Well, well, I was actually training in the gym in Phuket one day, and they were like, you fight Max 10 days, yeah? And I was like, all right, yeah, yeah, okay. And then Dan, <laughs> my trainer, was like, you fight Siui, yeah? You die, and laughed at me. And I was like, all right, he's like, you won't fight Shua? I was like, yeah, all right, yeah, I'll do it. I didn't think too much about it. Yeah. Outsider. Um, sorry about that. No problems. Um, where was I? Yeah. So. So so you you fought. I found you, I was fighting him. Yeah. Yeah. And your trainer and, uh, said that you're gonna die. And everyone was saying, "Oh, are you really fighting him?" When they seen the poster, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, I mean, I didn't think too much about it." And. uh People were asking me, oh, what are you going to do? Are you going to be careful and that? And I was like, no, I'm just going to go head on and just just have a go, you know? You know what's the worst that can happen? Like, you, you might as well make them fight your heart out when you get given a name like that, you know? And then just, yeah, it's the most memorable fight I've had because I, like, you know, I, I was, like, I'm not normally that happy after I fight, you know? I'm always, <laughs> like, critical. But after that, I was really happy after that. Mate, because I was watching you in the ring and... Uh, you guys are exchanging elbows and you'd land some and he'd land some and you even were smiling at him sometimes. Well, yeah, I don't know. It's just because I, I remember in the first round, we just started and I actually threw the first elbow at him and he pulled this funny look at me, like <laughs> cocked his head to the side and gave me some weird look. So <laughs> I just thought I'm going to start smiling at him back. and you know, It's all part of the game, isn't it? you just got to like... And that, that's what I like. I feel I fight best when I get stuck into like a war. Yeah, you know, that's, when I fight the, that's when I fight the best is when I'm like kind of hurt a bit and you know it's going back and forward. That, yeah. that, that's how I like to fight. Well, we certainly love to watch it, mate. Make no mistake about that. And I want another thing I wanted to ask you: um, your toughness. Where does that come from? Have you always had that since a kid, or is that something you've developed over time? I don't know. I've always been really determined. Like <laughs> I never give up on things. But like, yeah, you get tougher and tougher the more you fight. You know. Yeah. But like I've yeah I've always fought with fought with my heart like um because like I said when I started I was never that I was never really that good so you know you have to you got to use something haven't you if you haven't got all the skills in the world it's like you're trying to substitute um when you were starting you weren't as technical as what you are now so you used your aggression more but your aggression but now that you're technical as well you've still got that aggression yeah I guess you just yeah I guess you just some, some people just have it and some you know. Some people just Yeah, dude. Mate, I, I love I love watching you walk around and seal the ring because you look so confident, like you can't wait to get back to the corner fast enough to get it on. Is that how you feel when you're in the ring waiting for the bell? Because you look well, supremely confident. I've always I, I, when I 
walk to the ring, I always find I get less nervous the closer I get. Then once I step over and I'm in there, like I'm actually like feel quite relaxed. Like I'm, and I like to. I've never want, done a long wide crew. Like I mean, even if I do like a proper one, it's really short. And like most of my favourite fighters as well are short wide crews. Hey, that's what I want to ask you. Who are your favourite fighters? Uh, Pontonay Simonto. You definitely like a friend, and I just look up to him because he just throws down like, you know, no one else. Absolutely. Um, I like Kulab Dam, who's like a current star on Channel Seven. I like Mung Tai, obviously because he hammers people out with elbows. Um, <laughs> but there's loads. I'm not one of the, those people who just sort of obsesses over one fighter. But yeah, you know, normally if someone says like, "Who's your favourite fighter?" Uh, one of the things I always say is Quantum like I've been watching him since I started, and it's like. You know, he's uh, someone I've always looked up to. Mate, that's that's some good idols to have. Um, one thing I want to, another thing I want to ask you about Max is, in between rounds of Max, I personally enjoy how the cameraman gets up close so I can watch the fighters and their facial expressions to see what's going on. But as a fighter, does that bother you at all with the camera being all up in your face, or it no. doesn't bother you? I don't notice the camera. What does annoy me is when like half the promoters from Max come in your corner and start yelling at you. Yeah. You don't notice the cameras because there's like 20 people in the corner pulling your legs and yelling at you, telling you to go forwards. Yeah. When but really... you get, it's not too bad. I mean, it's, I guess it's, I like it there now. It's exciting, you know. I like the way it's sort of, uh, you know, I, I, like, I like the stadium. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, and you did say you have, you mentioned that you've got a fight coming up next week. When you're, yeah. prepping, when, when you're prepping for a fight, what's a typical day for Luke Barr? When you're in fight um, training, fight well, camp. Well, when I'm like two weeks out from the fight, I stay in the gym. Um, you know, I've got a room in the gym, a shared room in the gym, and get up at six every day, run. And then uh, when we're training with Chan, like it's not like the same every morning. We don't just like run and hit pads and then hit bag. Sometimes I'll run and hit pads and hit the bag. Or sometimes I'll be like, all right, boxing, sparring straight away. But always have like a proper session in the morning. You know, do all the conditioning and everything, and then the afternoon start about three forty-five. Do a little run, skipping for about ten, fifteen minutes, and pad rounds, clinching, sparring sometimes. Bag. I mean, it's like it is at most gyms in Thailand. Yeah. And then, to be honest, it's all down to you, though. Really, you know, you can follow a routine, you can still be fucking lazy, can't you? Yeah. It it depends how much. Uh, it's just how much effort you put in. Exactly, mate. You took the words right out of my mouth. And um, when you cut weight, how do you do it? <laughs> I just fucking get on with it and do it. I just what? chuck the suit on and run it off. Yeah. You don't I've know. cut weight in stupid ways before, but I always manage to to sort of pull it off. Do you? Um, I prepare for it now more. Like I do the whole water loading thing for like. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. And do you sort of like? Um, like, do you watch what you eat and that sort of stuff, or do you sort of do it the old school way? Just eat Thai food and don't eat too much crap from 7-Eleven. Yeah. I've stopped fighting at 65 kilos. I used to fight at 65, and then after I did two tournaments at 65 in a row and killed myself making weight, I was like, I'm not doing that anymore. So now I just fight at 67 and above. What's, what do you... Much what do you what what do you normally walk around? What's your normal walking weight? Seventy two, probably. Like I, mean, I don't really ever go that high. Yeah, I'm, I'm always about the same. That's good. So that so I, I don't really concentrate on losing weight until like the last week before a fight. Yeah. Because okay. I, I I like personally, I don't think if you have to concentrate on losing weight. You can't really train well. Yep. I can't anyway. I just I it kills the enjoyment for me. Yeah. No, that. That's fair enough, mate. That's totally understandable. And, mate, because uh, you do live in, in Pattaya at the Kai San Suk Gym, how do you manage to keep your focus and your eye on the prize? Because if anyone's ever been to Pattaya, they know how easy it is to get distracted and well, caught up in the nightlife and wander astray. I'd be lying if I said I'd never get distracted here. That is impossible. <laughs> but, uh, no, our gym is it's out in Naglua, and it's it's not close to all the like party, the party and the nightlife. Stuff. Yeah. So, like, like as I said, when it's two weeks out from fight, stay in the gym. Yeah. You know, if you want to fight, well, you've got to stay away from that stuff. 
Oh, definitely. <laughs> all the distractions for a bit, and then you know, you can go and have fun after you fight. And yeah. I rarely take that much time off anyway, so you know. Yeah, well, you I can't quite well these days, I think. No, exactly, mate, and you certainly, yeah, not leaving much time in between each fight, so that, that just keeps you busy and keeps you occupied. Yeah. Mate, have you have you got a bucket list or any goals that you have already achieved and any that you are still yet to achieve in the sport? Well, I, um, well, I did want to win some belts on Max, but I managed to lose it, <laughs> lose a couple of tournaments, but... You know, that's not the end of the world. Um, I'm fighting for a belt in Hong Kong next month. Oh, yeah, WMC so... four-man tournament. Oh, awesome, man. Is that in a... fact, the only goal I've ever really set is at the beginning of the year, I was like, oh, I really want to reach 50 fights by the end of the year. And I'm actually going to do it exactly. <laughs> you so know, it turned out that way that I've got one fight next week and I've got another one booked and I'll be on 50. So, uh, yeah, I've reached a goal. Oh, that's awesome, man, and, and congratulations. Yeah. Mate, for the time being, um, are you interested? I, I know you said um, you've got Hong Kong coming up next month, um, but are you interested in fighting on any other shows inside or outside of Thailand, or is Max pretty much the main one for now? Well, I, I fought on Top King before. Yeah. Last year, um, once. But you know what? It's, it's pretty convenient fighting on Max, and I've been there for a while, and I know all the people who work there, and. They give me good fights, and it's in Patea, my gym in Patea, so yeah, I'm going to be here for for a bit. Of course, I want to fight in other places. I like to fight in Bangkok as well. Would you yeah. ever fight on like? Would you be keen to fight on Lumpini or Raja, like those yeah. stadiums? Yeah, yeah. And next year, that's one that's one goal. Next year, I'm going to do a bit more five round as well. Have you do done many? Have you done many five rounders this year? On not this year. I haven't done any this year. But last year I was doing them all the time. Yeah. What but do you this put? year I've had, I've had a ten fights on max this year. Already? Ten main event fights on max this year. Mate, that's awesome. Nine. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. Take a bow, son. But that's all I've done. Yeah, because it's convenient as well. I mean, it's like it's in Patera and I'm staying Patera, and I tried to slow down a bit this year because last year I like. <laughs> Just fought all the time. I like, ended up hurting myself. Well, I think Max is a is a good platform because I mean that's how I found out about you and, and no, noticed you. So I mean that, that's a really good platform for people that want to get known well, internationally. Um, yeah. Mate, that's what I wanted to ask you. In Max or any other organisation you have fought on inside of Thailand, if someone gets KO'd or concussed, are they prevented or banned from fighting for a certain period of time or until a doctor clears them? I don't. I don't even know. Okay. I actually don't know. <laughs> no, no, that's that's fine, mate. Just... Um, they, to be honest, it's about you've got to look after yourself. You know, and your gym's got to look after you as well. If anyone gets knocked out really hard, then you know you're not going to fight for a month, are you? Also, you know, you're going to take a, a suitable amount of time off. But yeah, I, I've never, I've never heard of any like rules or. Yeah, there's nothing, there's no, yeah. Okay. I'm sure they do have, I'm sure if you're a regular fighter on Max and you get knocked out hard, they are not going to book you another fight in like two weeks. Yeah, they normally okay. only book you fights once a month. Okay. They leave at least like a month between your fights. This month's been a bit different because they've been like juggling stuff around and I'm fighting outside next month. So they've, they just said to me, oh, can you fight in 12 days this time? So I fought twice there this month, but normally that's not the case. Yeah, okay. Um, and one other question I want to ask is, have you ever been tested before, during or after a fight? Oh, have you ever been tested before or after a fight for PEDS or drugs in Thailand? Um, and what are your thoughts on drug testing in Muay Thai or lack of it? Uh, are you for it, against it, or you don't care? I don't really think about it. I don't really care if my opponents do stuff or something. I doesn't, you know, that's up to them. You know, I don't know how much it actually helps anyone, really. Of course... Of course, you know, their performance enhancing drugs are a reason, but I don't really think about that much testing and stuff. The only time I ever heard it mentioned is that uh, it was one of the King's Birth, like a King's Birthday show two years ago. Some, someone was barking on about doing uh, tests when we were checking weight. And the promoters of the show, the Thai 
said, right, we've been waiting for too long. Time for uh, the, the fighters have been here for too long, and they started arguing with this this Lang who was going on about testing, and he basically just ended up shouting at him and telling him to shut up. <laughs> but that that's the only time I've ever heard it mentioned. Oh, cool. Uh, this is Thailand Day. Awesome. Yeah, mate. Uh... Apart from uh, Max and uh, Hong Kong, have you got anything else planned for the end of this year slash heading into next year? Not yet. No, I've just got, like I said, uh, the fight on Ma a fight on Max next week, the four-man tournament in Hong Kong on the 19th of December. And then for the first time in two years, I'll have Christmas off. <laughs> so will you, be, will you be heading back home or Christmas in time? No, 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 I don't like going home very much. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like taking a lot of time off. You know, uh, I don't want to take months off at a time because I think it just sets you back. Yeah. I think I've, when I go home, I'm like, I'm not coming home for more than 14 days. <laughs> like I just will not go home for a long time. So I don't, you know, it's just expensive there. And actually, my last trip was good. I went home and taught for like most most of the time in Wales. You know, I was just holding pants with people and teaching, and I enjoyed doing that. But I I always just miss it here so much when I go. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Mate, uh, I think that's almost it um, from my end. Um, I just, uh, is it, I just want to say thanks for your time, um, and I really appreciate it. Um, but before I let you go, before I let you go, mate, is there anyone you wish to thank or um, shout outs? Yeah, well, of course. Um, I mean, I've got to thank everyone at Sitmon Chai, Jim, especially the boss there. Uh, they know who I'm talking about. They've always looked after me, even to this day. Like you know, they. They've always been really, really good to me. Um, I've got to thank a lot of my close friends in Thailand who like I've known for a long time. Uh, Willie Whipple, Ryan Briggs, you should interview him as well. Ryan Briggs, is it? Yeah, he's probably the biggest character you'll meet in Thailand. I'll add him to my ever-going list. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, Dorian Price, I've known him for a while. He's always, uh, I've always kind of looked up to him because he's a, uh, He's older. He's older than I am. And when I first came to Thailand, he was like a sponsored fighter here. So I've been I've been in touch with him the whole time I've been here. Uh, I want to say thanks to Santuk Jim and the family. They've looked after me at Max since I started fighting there. And I want to, more than anyone, I want to thank Chan, Chan Ritsit O for for training me really. Because before before I started training with him, I wasn't like I didn't have the same dedication and I wasn't kind of going forwards in the same way. Yep. So, you know, he's uh, he's done a lot for me, like probably more than he knows. That's it? Yeah, so, yeah that's it. And, yeah, that's... and, mate, if people want you to fight on their shows or people want to follow you, stay up to date with what's happening with you fight-wise or contact you, how can that happen? Um, I just do everything through Facebook. Okay, so no bar. Message me. I'm, I'm not the best with social media. I should get better at it. But yes, Facebook. Message me on Facebook. No problem. I'll probably say yes if you offer me a fight somewhere. And <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, mate, once again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, and uh, best of luck for next weekend. I'll certainly be watching anyway on Max. Yeah, thanks very much for, for talking to me. Thanks, Luke. Appreciate your time, mate. All right. Cheers, bro.